Hello, welcome along. Here in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, Teams private chat and migrating obviously, private chat content from one uh, user to another in a from a source M365 tenant into a obviously a target M365 tenant. This is something we do uh, we on this particular migration I've been working on. Uh, we've done the mailbox, we've done the OneDrive, we've done the main Teams migration, and now we're moving on to that Teams private chat. So I'm going to take you through how we might uh, set that up on the Migration Wiz console, and we'll be able to see end-to-end -end how that works with these particular users. So the first thing we'll do here is sign in to the Migration Wiz console which just takes us through to this screen. Now what I want to do first is go into the Help Center. I want to show you how things are, are set up in the, the article here. It explains how to do the private chat. We're going to run through that article and, and show you how to set it up. But I'm going to walk through it actually on the tenants themselves so you can see how it, how it actually gets done in practice. So if we do Performer Migration here and you have a look at here for Teams Migrations on the left here. And then you can see Private Chat Migration Guide so once in there, you'll notice that um, the actual setup for it is quite simple. Um, one of the things you have to do, if we just go down here, get past these items here, preparing the source environment, what we've got is a uh, this link here, which is the application permission we had to assign to both the, the source and also the, the target. You can see the, the source requires the full control, whereas the destination is a delegate access, so there are two different ones there. But we have to have a user that we're going to give credentials to, doesn't have to have any particular rights in there but it does have to be a member of that migration with security group very similar to what we've done with like the OneDrive the teams and, and the mailbox moves as well very similar style setup that you're probably used to as well so really in terms of the setup here what we're going to do first then is for our source environment and for our target we're going to run this uh, run this link effectively on both of those so how we do that is we would right click on that and copy the link address and then we go and find our source tenant, which is this guy here. So we're logged into the admin center and various other consoles here. What we would do there is we just open up a new window there and we paste that in. It will then tell us that we need to log on. Obviously, that's our admin account we're using. And it was talking about the permissions that it requires to be able to do this migration work. So we're going to accept those. And that will register that application inside the Entro ID side. And it, once it's done, it drops us back to this, this front screen here. So we know that has been done effectively. If you want to go and check it out and see what it has done in there, what you can do, you can go into the identity, which is the, the Entro ID uh, linkage there, and go and have a look at Enterprise Applications. If we look at those, then you'll, if we look at them by date order, we'll see the one that's been newly created in there, which should be under this guy here. In fact, it looks like I already had it in there before, but that is that is the one we've got in there, the PCH4 control. So really when you're done with the migration, uh, what you really want to be doing is going back into this enter ID uh, area and then go and remove that uh, that control just takes takes that uh, those rights away from the the console in there so that's that's in place that's all good in there so what I will do I'll just close that we're going to do the the same thing for the target tenant except that one is a slightly different uh, slightly different one if you go back in here you'll notice the the destination requires delegate access so we'll cut uh, sorry copy that link address there and we're going to find our target tenant which is this one here, the Deplanium accounts. And we'll do the same thing. We'll drop that in and pick our account. And you can see it requires less rights to be able to do that. So we just hit accept in there. And that once again, once it's done, it will drop us back to the front screen, which is what this is. Um, so yeah, likewise, if I looked in the intra, I would find that enterprise application as well. Now what I'm looking for is to make sure you've got it set up there. I, I have a migration with a uh, service account I have on both tenants. I call it MigWiz at Planium. I've got MigWiz at Cozy Mouse on the, on the source side. But um, that's what you need to have set up. It does need to have a license for this. So it must have uh, effectively a Teams license um, to be able to, to work and, and read that. And also you'll notice what we need to have in the security groups is we've got the migration with security group and for the membership has to be in there as well. 
So that's obviously important. And like with the other service accounts we've had with the other modules, make sure that it has MFA turned off. So put it in your conditional access um, exclusion group um, so we don't have MFA turned on for that one. So that's for the, the target side. Let's jump back into our source side and you'll see a very similar situation. If I just scroll down here, you'll find there's the, the MigWiz account, which is this guy, again, licensed, and it's a cloud-only account. And if I have a look at these groups, you'll notice that we have the same setup. We've got a few more groups on this particular tenant, but we've got a migration wiz one, and we have a membership of the Cozy Mouse. And yes, obviously that one has been uh, excluded from the MFA as well. So with that in place, we're actually ready to jump into the console and uh, perform a, a private chat migration. So how we do that is we'll go to the MigWiz console here and you can see I've already got these other ones we've been working on. Um, so we've got users in play that we can certainly do this with. So we're going to do the create project and it's going to be a collaboration private chats project, the new one as you can see here. So project name, we'll just call this one Cozy, oh, cozy Mouse uh, private chat demo and obviously for the, the customer will be Cozy Mouse as well. And then we'll set up our source and uh, and target or destination endpoints there. So we'll set up a new one and we'll get this one, let's say, Cozy Mouse 365. And this is going to be that uh, service account for, as you can see there, the, the CozyMouse.com. I'll put the password in there, like so, and add that in. And that's telling us, making sure we have that uh, admin consent, which we did before. That's uh, an additional link here. If you didn't go through the, the help desk um, article, then you can grab it from here as well. So making sure that one's been done, which it has. So we'll jump into our destination now. And we'll say a new, and this will be the uh, Planium M365. And we'll have MigWiz com like so and that and we get a similar message about the delegate access to which is good now um, once again we need to specify the region in which we want the the worker located that's doing the migration it's got to be as close as you can obviously to the site where the destination tenant lives to get best performance that way so this one is in the United States and then we hit uh, save and go to summary We do that and hit save project and now we're ready to add some items in there now various ways to get the items in there we've got the quick add which will be a one by one you can just type it in for you know user to user uh, you got the bulk add if you want to put that into a csv file and drop them in so you get the source and the primary emails in a csv there's a sample one you can download just to fill that in and load that back that would certainly work out well for you. Or you've got the auto discover. It can actually do a, a scan and pick up those users in Teams and you just select them from, from that point, uh, which is obviously useful if you've got uh, um, uh, a lot you just want to bring in with, like I say, auto discover. In this case, we're only going to do one user with private chat, the one we've been working on, which is our Bob Jones at uh, Cozy Mouse. So in this case, I'm just going to hit the quick add and I can actually just type him in. So I'm going to use the quick ad for this one. We're just going to put uh, Bob's details in there, which I'll just uh, uh, paste in quickly. Like so. And hit the save item and close. And that'll drop him in there. There he is. Now we're going to kick off the verify credentials first of all. So if we do the item here, the reason we do that is just to make sure that the, the API is all uh, connected properly. You've done everything for the setup. The users exist. It can read and write to both of them. It's just a good check to make sure that when you do kick off the migration, everything is going to work correctly. So we hit OK on that. And you'll find it will actually go through pretty quickly um, and actually check those out. So we'll, we'll come back in a few minutes after a few refreshes and just see what um, see what that looks like. All right, now let's come back. It's completed. It's happy with that uh, uh, credential check. So we'll now go ahead and do a full migration of all the private chat. 
Now, um, we'll only do 30 days. That's that's all that the APIs can handle. That's that's by design. That's a normal thing, 30 days of chat. But really what we do is we just hit the full migration here and we can kick that off. I do want to say add selected users to the hydrated chat just so it's got the usernames of who we're talking to in there as well as the, the Bob Jones name. So we'll click on that one, hit start migration, and that will go ahead and start that for us. So that's also completed. So let's just drag up what that chat now looks like in the target. And you can see, yes, it's got some things in there. Let's have a look at this one here. So this is how it uh, how it comes across. You'll see that it uh, it adds in, obviously it comes as a group chat. So the chat between Bob and Bernard shows up like this. Now, if you want to continue with that chat with Bernard, you actually need to add him back in because if you look at this here, it, the member of the, the chat is really the, the service account plus yourself or, you know, or for the user. So they would need to know that if they start typing in here and, and put something in, that is really going to be uh, really going between uh, just himself and that service account. So he does need to then add um, Bernard back in there if Bernard is obviously part of that that migration set. So you can see there are some limitations and things on, on how it works, but essentially it does bring over the private chat um, uh, for that history and effectively does work. So um, so there we go. And likewise, looking at some of these others, you can see the one with Aspen. It's a very, very similar situation um, with the, the data is in there. But of course, you're going to have to add add the user in or start a new chat. So it's really good for like historical purposes and things. It's uh, it's just one of those items that is, is very useful to bring over. And people do like to have some of their private chat uh, preserved and brought over in the migration. Uh, but obviously, you need to look at those uh, limitations and migration processes just to make sure that this service is actually right for exactly what you want to be doing with it. So yeah, thanks for watching. That concludes that session today. Um, yeah, thanks again. We'll uh, catch you on the next one. Goodbye.